So I'm going to start with a uh, Rube Goldberg machine. Uh, of course, he's uh, an American cartoonist, and he's famous for these sort of overly elaborate, overly complicated uh, gadgets, machines that do these really, really simple tasks. So this is a, a window washer. And you know, I think that's something that, that's really, really interesting for me in my practice is to sort of overdo something, overbuild, over, overly complicate something uh, to make it more interesting and start a different dialogue. And I'm not the only person who's obsessed with Rube Goldberg machines. There's actually worldwide competitions to build these things, and these are, these are the winners from 2010. These guys are super excited. They were watering a plant. Um, and I think, I mean, the good thing about a presentation this size is that you can say really general things. And I'm going to use uh, the Rube Goldberg machine as like a metaphor for art making and just leave it at that. Uh, these are a, a duo from Belgium, Belgium, uh, who actually didn't know that Rube Goldberg machines existed. They didn't know who he was until the press, somebody interviewing them mentioned it. So this is uh, one of their... Uh, pieces, it's sort of a work in progress and it changes in every space that they show it. And it's actually a still machine, but it has moving components, so it has video components and then the shadows move as well. And so it's this sort of tenuous, fantastical machine with drawings and video with all these sort of things that you wish would move and it sort of does but sort of doesn't. Uh, this is Arthur Ganson, he's a kinetic sculptor and I really, really love his work. He builds these c extremely complicated machines to do very, very simple things. Uh, this machine is sort of a hand-cranked machine, um, brilliantly engineered in order to make these little flaps of paper um, look like birds in flight. And it's really, really uh, sort of poetic and tragic, whimsical, funny, all at the same time. So this is another one of his pieces where this, it's quite large and, and uh, you know, you can, videos really of these things would, would be better. Uh, and that just sort of this machine pushes this wishbone along or this wishbone pulls this machine along. So I find there's something really human about this idea. Uh, this is still from OK Go. Uh, every video they make is sort of a Rube Goldberg machine. Probably everyone in this room has seen it. But they have this car, and they drive around to the desert, and it's got retractable arms, and it hits all these instruments, like thousands of pianos and guitars and drums, uh, in order to make the soundtrack for the video. So just like there's no need to make a video like that, but it's absolutely amazing. A uh, piece by Chris Burden um, called Metropolis 2. Chris Burden, of course, famous for edgy performance art, you know, shooting himself, uh, crucifying his hands, uh, and now he makes this crazy thing, you know? It takes up an entire room, it's like a whole bunch of Hot Wheels cars that zoom around this thing, it's absolutely amazing, but like, what is going on, you know? Uh, this is Theo Jansen, and I love this picture of him because he looks like an obsessive, you know, compulsive sort of guy, and I think he probably is. He builds these uh, sculptures, these kinetic sculptures that are operated and move via the wind. This piece is called Rhinoceros. Uh, and so, like, think about the engineering that goes into these things, right? Like, the, the man must be brilliant. These are also his pieces. And really, all this engineering is so that these pieces will walk up and down on the beach, you know? And they're amazing to watch in action. And the way he talks about them, there's a TED Talk. He talks about them as if they're alive, which makes it even better. Like, he sees them, like, in herds, and, uh, you know, eventually they'll reproduce and live on their own, you know? And, and so to hear him sort of talk about it is great. This is one of my pieces uh, called Building on Building Machine. So I built these six really basic machines that actually just hit the advance button on these really old uh, crusty Kodak slide projectors and create this animation that's sort of clunky and awkward of the structure being built and then immediately uh, disassembled. This is a piece by Sabrina Russo, a Canadian artist, where it's like a table with two hand-cranked flip books. So you have these, uh, this invitation to sit across from somebody, this, this um, sort of position of dialogue, but you're each sort of privately engaged in this, again, sort of like an overly complicated animation. So I'm interested in, in the ways that we can make animation really, really complicated and remind ourselves of the still. David Hoffos, if anyone has not seen his work, it's really mesmerizing. You walk into a room, you look into these little windows, and you see these elaborate dioramas with a video person moving around. And usually that person is doing something really, really mundane or simple, like this guy walks out of his camper and back in. And this is just to show you like the, the setup. So you can imagine the time, like the time spent in the making of that thing in order to have that little man just sort of pop out, walk around and walk back in. It's just incredible, and I think you know it makes that gesture um, sort of more uh, poignant and uh, significant. Ah, 
caught up. Okay, this is uh, Wilm uh, Delvoy. Uh, he's a Belgian, Belgian artist as well. This is his digestive machine, one of many. Like, he just keeps redoing this. So he feeds it food on this, this end over here and, you know, basically explodes the systems that we have in our body so that you can watch the food being processed and digested and then at the end outputted it, sort of, uh, then he sells the outputs. Uh, this is Tim Hawkinson, Uber Organ, um, fills up an entire, you know, stadium or, or a dis huge made up of plastic sheeting and wire and mylar. It's really, really low tech, but at the same time, highly complicated. Uh, and it's sort of like walking within uh, a large giant's body as well as being this large pipe organ. This is the piece I'm working on now. This is a really sort of crummy mock-up where I'm inviting people to uh, submit images of people they wish to erase from their memory uh, and then printing those on knitted swatches and having them slowly with these spools be unraveled throughout the period of an exhibition. So, yeah. Uh, this is a piece by Max Dean um, where he has this industrial robot, and this is sort of an older piece now, and he gives uh, the, presents the viewer, the robot presents the viewer with these family photographs, and the viewer has to decide whether to act to preserve the photographs or allow them to be destroyed. So it shows you this photograph for you know just an instant, and you have to decide whether or not to interact with the machine or it will be shredded. And I think this it'll be interesting to see probably already how this piece changes because our relationship to the photograph as an object has really changed too, probably since he created this piece uh, in the early 90s. Yeah. Okay, and I'm going to end with this piece. Uh, this is a, a book by Anne Carson. She's a Canadian poet, um, and it's called Knox, and it's about sort of the death of her brother, who is a really enigmatic figure, uh, who she didn't know very well, and she's sort of coming to, to terms with his absence now, his permanent absence. And so she's sort of exploded this book into this sort of collection of uh, art, art artifacts and, and things to sort of talk about something that you can't very well talk about. That's it.